Hello, everyone. My name is Boyd Taylor. Welcome to this special presentation of Westminster Residents Present. Our guest speaker uh, tonight is Westminster resident Julian Reed, who will speak to us about the Kennedy assassination, which happened 57 years ago yesterday. Julian's book on the subject is titled JFK's Final Hours in Texas, an eyewitness remembers the tragedy and its aftermath. Julian's a Fort Worth native. He began life, work life <laughs> at 18 as a sports writer for the uh, Fort Worth Press. He was also a radio and television producer. At 24, Reed founded Reed Poland Inc., a public relations and government affairs firm that he moved to Austin in 1966. Uh, over the years, he's been involved with scores of projects, including the San Antonio World's Fair, the launch of Southwest Airlines. I understand he still has an original bag of peanuts uh, from that launch and the opening of the Dallas-Fort Worth International Airport in the 70s. He also worked on the South Texas Nuclear Project and the Ringling Brothers and Barnum and Bailey Circus. Yeah. He helped uh, with campaigns from uh, for former Lieutenant Governor Ben Barnes and worked for former Democratic uh, Representative Jim Wright, who would become Speaker of the House of Representatives. In 1963, uh, Julian was an advisor to, gov to then Governor John Connolly. Good evening, Julian. Thank you for, uh, for being here tonight. Thank you, Boyd. Nice to be with you. So Julian, I think all of us recall vividly where we were 57 years ago uh, when we heard that uh, the president uh, had been shot. I was in a noon service club meeting up in Pampa, Texas and the owner of the radio station uh, interrupted our meeting to give us the news. Uh, and I suppose that everybody you talk to uh, remembers that day. It's etched in all our, mem our collective memories. But you were, uh, you were in the motorcade, not far behind the uh, presidential limo. Tell us uh, how that came about. Uh, start, start, if you would, at the beginning. Uh, why was Kennedy in Texas? Well, the short answer, Boyd, is that he was here for money. <laughs> he had been wanting to come to Texas. He had heard all his life, I guess, about all those rich Texans. And after he was elected to president, he began to ask uh, President John, Vice President Johnson, as well as John Connolly. John Connolly, incidentally, had been uh, his uh, secretary of the Navy. So he had a relationship of his own. But he had, he had uh, wanted to raise money. They came up with a story that uh, they were coming down here to settle a squabble, a political squabble, that is, between uh, <clears throat> the Senator and uh, Lyndon Johnson. Uh, anyway, that was just a cover story really, but they wanted originally to come down here and do five fundraisers, five, one, two, three, four, five. And Governor Connolly said, no, 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 no. If we're gonna bring him down here, we're not gonna do that. <clears throat> so we, we want the people of Texas to know the president. If they see him in a, in a, in a right light, they will like him, and that's the purpose of the trip. So he ended up doing four non-political events, uh, chamber of commerce type things, uh, and only one fundraiser, one major fundraiser here in Austin. And uh, that's, that's what the plan was. And to set that plan off, of course, took a tremendous amount of work. Uh, I happened to be involved with it. Uh, because I had done, as you, as you mentioned, a lot of work for Governor Connolly, his campaign for governor. I had been a counselor to him for all those years, well, the years between. So it would happen since, since we were the host, we meaning the governor was the host, the official host, uh, I was helping him host the Washington Press Corps. The Press Corps uh, came down here in, in hundreds of them. Uh, 
they filled up one charter plane, all the top uh, riders from Washington, because principally they wanted to see how Jackie was received and how the president was received. So that's how I happened to be down here on the trip, hosting on behalf of Governor Conley. It was it was pretty unusual for Jackie to go on these uh, kinds of trips. I, was she was she uh, reluctant to come to Texas, or do you know? She was well. She had just come out. She had had a miscarriage of a child, and this was the first trip, I believe, that she had made following that after her recovery. Uh, uh, so that there was a lot of obviously a lot of excitement built up around that. And everybody wanted to see Jackie, all the people that uh, got invitations to come. I'll talk to you a little more about that. What you're looking at right now is the Texas Welcome Dinner, uh, which is uh, was, was the big deal in Austin. That was to be the final event. And $100 a plate, this is in 1963. Yes, that's a nice that little a sum. That was a that was a big ticket item in 1963. That was a nice item, nice yeah. item, and it was a sellout. You could not you could get get another chair in the place. Uh, so people began uh, buying those, snapping up those tickets, and making plans to come to Austin at that time. And if you see, I think we have another slide here. Of uh, <clears throat> yes, here we are. Here is here is the old people who have been in Austin very long. Will will recognize this place. It was the old city, city, uh, uh, all lost and um, uh, where we had all of our all of our events. It was a convention all center, I think. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and you'll see the sign up there. Welcome, welcome. Uh, so that was that was a big deal, a really really big deal. All the hotels were sold out, but that's the event. So we. I, I, how long were they going? Was how long did the schedule call for him to be in Texas? Well, it was very brief, really. Uh, they came in here to San Antonio, uh, did a, uh, an event in San Antonio. You'll see that in a minute as well. Uh, uh, San Antonio flew from San Antonio to to uh, Houston, from Houston to Fort Worth, Fort Worth to Dallas, and Dallas. To Austin, and then to tie it all off, and one of the key points that uh, was important for all the political watchers was that the president and first lady were spending the night at the LBJ Ranch, uh -huh. which of course never happened. But all of that was compressed in a very brief period of time, as you can you can see. Uh, you have a picture here of uh, Ms. Conley, the hostess uh, meeting. Uh, the Kennedys at the airport in San Antonio. Uh, she, of course, uh, the, the president, uh, Governor Conley, was, was uh, he, he had another role, so that's the reason he wasn't there on, on her arrival. But they were, they were on their way to uh, an Air Force base outside of San Antonio, dedication of a new resource out there. So they were on their way from the airport in San Antonio. This is a picture of the, when they landed in San Antonio. Here's a picture of the re reception they got from that. Uh, you know, there was all kinds of speculation of, well, will Texans like uh, candidates? You know, there was speculation, yeah. oh, nobody will like them. You know, well, hello, uh, here they are uh, with Jackie. So you can see that they're not exactly uh, unhappy with her. Uh, but this was in San Antonio. Uh, we went then from San Antonio. I think we have a slide here, though. Here's here's a slide of the president speaking in San Antonio at the Air Force Base down there, uh, where he dedicated this facility, as I mentioned. Then they left left there to go to San Antonio to uh, Houston. <clears throat> in Houston, they went to honor uh, a very important member of Congress from Houston, who was head of of uh, of a lot of uh, uh, finance that was important to the president. And there, Jackie took time before they went into the event uh, to speak to a Latin American group uh, that begged her to come. And the big shock, the big surprise to everybody was that she spoke to them in Spanish. 
Oh, well, wow. you can imagine. Yeah. Uh, that made their day and night. Uh, so this was a big, big deal uh, for the cultural side of the state, uh, for the Hispanics. Uh, and so this preceded the, the other event. Then they went from there to Fort Worth. Uh, what is Fort this Worth, room? What is uh, this that room? That was where they would spend the night uh, in Fort Worth. And in Fort Worth, we had an interesting thing happen. Uh, the original suite where the Kennedys were stay that night at the old Hotel Texas downtown, the old timers, old timers will know her. Uh, let's go back to the, yeah, to the other there. Sorry. To the other shot uh, of the uh, hotel, uh, if I may, yeah. Uh, at the Hotel Texas, as I said, the hotel where they were supposed to stay, about the time they checked in, or a little before they checked in, the Secret Service got nervous because there were two entrances for ways to get in and out of the suite. And so they freaked out on that. And if you can believe it, they actually moved LBJ and Ms. Johnson into the, into the top suite. And they put the Kennedys in a smaller suite, uh, one that was not very grand. And uh, when the arts community, uh, the reception committee, learned about this, uh, panic set in. Yeah. And uh, they set out to redecorate the suite, the suite that the Kennedys stayed in that night. And uh, almost overnight, uh, they gathered together several millions, tens of millions of dollars of the very finest art collections to be had anywhere in the city. And uh, this was a redecoration job. Now, some of you uh, decorators of today's world may not think of this as the uh, most up-to-date look in the world, but it was a big deal that night, believe me. And so when the Kennedy steps set in, uh, they, they uh, were greeted by this incredible art exhibit, and they took the time to call uh, the hostess that headed up this drive the next morning to thank her for this uh, magnificent treat. Now this, we're in Fort Worth now, remember. They yeah. spent the night in Fort Worth. Fort Worth was one of those nonprofit events, uh, non-political non events uh, that uh, Governor Conley insisted on. It was a Chamber of Commerce breakfast. Uh, and it was a huge event, Chamber of Commerce breakfast. We had, uh, uh, before, before the breakfast, there had been a lot of consternation about the fact that those were all Chamber of Commerce people. The truth of the matter is, a lot of those people were Republicans. They weren't even Democrats, but they had snatched up these pictures, I uh, mean, these, these tickets, and wanted to jam the place and did. So uh, Jim Wright, who was Congressman, Democratic Congressman, uh, said, OK, we'll have a rally for the average person out, a free rally out in the parking lot across from the Hotel Texas. And sure enough, they had 5,000 people jammed into that parking lot for a, a surprise appearance of the president before that. And I believe, oh boy, if you go back one, uh, you should be able to see a picture of that, of that uh, somewhere there. There's a picture of Kennedy speaking uh, to that crowd. I think this is it, isn't it? Isn't that Kennedy right in the foreground? Well, this 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 one's okay. We're going to see it in a minute, but there's another one should be one. This this was the reception that they got after he spoke. Yeah. But there's there's a there's a there's a there's a slide. There we are. Yeah. Uh, here we have across the street. Uh, from the Hotel Texas, and you can see welcome to Fort Worth. You have President Kennedy, uh, LBJ, John Conley, uh, uh, Senator Yarbrough, and Don Kennard, uh, who was one of my clients, who was a congressman, uh, not a congressman, a member of the legislature, a senator of the legislature. And uh, all of them right outside, you'll notice they have raincoats on what well, there's had a, a little drizzle of rain that started yeah. this event and no one moved nobody left at all and just about the time uh, that uh, they went back in to speak uh, the clouds opened up and beautiful beautiful spring uh, spring not spring autumn evening 
afternoon set up with a beautiful sunset uh, coming on the way, sunrise coming. Oh, anyway, there they are outside the hotel. Now that we go inside the hotel, you saw all that crowd that showed up out there to meet them. And now, now this is this is the crowd that met them outside in the uh, parking lot. So that gives you an idea. You can see Kennedy's head. Now then, they go back inside, and here is the mob that was awaiting them. This is the Chamber of Commerce crowd, uh, sellout, obviously. And everybody wanted to see Jackie. What's Jackie? Is Jackie going to show up? I was standing in the back of the room with another uh, uh, person, and uh, she turned to me and said, do you think she's going to show? And I said, are you kidding? Of course she's going to make her own entrance. And sure enough, after all the rest of them were seated, uh, she did indeed uh, make her entrance, and the place went crazy, <laughs> absolutely crazy. Including so the Republicans, including all uh, the Republicans. Huh? Including all, oh yeah, everybody forgot their political identity. It's amazing. <laughs> anyway, this was this was the climax of Fort Worth. Then uh, they jumped on a plane and flew. I believe that the flying time was 14 minutes from Carswell Air Force Base uh, to Love Field. That was when Love Field was still operating. And here was the plane that brought them uh, uh, down from uh, from uh, after they got in range of the airport. And here you see them. If you look at the bottom of this picture, and you'll see Eastern Airlines. Anyone in the crowd remember Eastern Airlines? Long yeah, time right ago. <laughs> but anyway, there is uh, Mrs. Kennedy uh, departing first. Uh, the president right behind her, and Miss Conley, I believe, and uh, Governor Conley behind. <clears throat> now, this is Love Field. There had been particular concern about Dallas because Dallas had become known as a city of hate because of some very bad uh, things that happened there uh, uh, previously. Uh, Hadn't they uh, been uh, particularly uh, 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 unpleasant to uh, Mrs. Johnson? That's correct. Uh, Mrs. Johnson had been insulted there, uh, and also the uh, uh, the uh, U.S. dignitary to the United Nations yeah. uh, had been uh, uh, had had a very unpleasant experience. So there's a lot of worry about Dallas. Dallas, the leadership of Dallas was very concerned. So so the minute they landed, you know, all the speculation, all the media, that that charter airplane I told you about that was full of of prominent uh, uh, members of uh, legis members of the press corps uh, from Washington who came to watch, uh, they they just couldn't wait to see what sign, what kind of uh, reception that they would get in Dallas. Well, hello, uh, let's see what kind of reception they had in Dallas. Boy, oh, that's Fort Worth, let's huh? see. There we go. That's the kind of reception they got in Dallas. Yeah. That's just a tiny sh shot of what it looked like when they got to Dallas. Uh, so the Kennedys got all fired up because of this, obviously. Uh, they had so, uh, Secret Service all around them. They left Secret Service and walked down the rope line uh, before they got in the limo, you see here. here here's, here's a shot that shows them uh, crowding the crowd uh, and just having a ball. It was a wonderful, wonderful reception. Uh, great, great, great day. Uh, and as I mentioned to you earlier, the clouds had cleared, the blue sky, it was a beautiful fall afternoon. Everyone was happy. It was a great, great experience. Uh, so then they, they get in the, in the uh, limousine, open air limousine. <clears throat> Originally the plan was to have, this limousine was closed, it was not gonna be open at all. And when the weather turned better, they said, okay, we're not gonna wear a top. We're not gonna have a cover. A very fateful decision, obviously. Yeah. But yeah. from there all the way downtown, uh, crowds on either side, uh, jamming, trying to reach them, trying to get their attention. It was just an unbelievable scene. And then finally we got downtown I was in the White House press bus right behind them. 
And then here's a very, very touching picture, the confetti uh, coming down uh, from the sky on either side. Uh, people were six or seven deep, if you can believe this, on Main Street, on either side of the street and hanging out of the skyscrapers. It was an incredible scene. And just about this time, about a block before we made the turn, just about a block or maybe a block and a half, just before we made the turn to this building that you're looking at right now, Mrs. Kennedy, Mrs. Mrs. Connolly turned to the president and said, Mr. President, you certainly can't say that Dallas doesn't love you. Oh, and we think those are the last words he ever heard. Because as we went head on to this building, you see, look at that top floor. Look at the top floor where the windows are up. These were the pictures taken immediately after Oswald left the building. There, and we made the turn to the left. Just a moment. I heard a pop, pop, pop. We didn't know what had happened. We thought, first of all, it might be a possibly a backfire because we had uh, motorcycles on either side of us. Uh, and then we saw, I saw across the bus driver where I was sitting, across him I saw families scrambling with their children down on the grassy knoll. Uh, and then if you give me another picture here, oh, and here's the picture from upstairs. This is the picture out the window. You just saw the open window down below. This is, the, this is a picture that was shot by a Time Magazine photographer, supposedly less than half an hour from the time they found the gun that Oswald had left. So then, now, this photo right here, this is the bus, the White House press bus that I was on, jammed with the journalists from all over the United States. And you see the people scrambling, not knowing what's going on. Well, we didn't know what to do exactly. So we decided that we would go on to where the big luncheon, there was a big luncheon set with a thousand more people who had been waiting all morning for the president. And here is a picture of the luncheon. Look at the, look at the size of this luncheon. They had no clue what had happened less than two miles away from them. So we had to decide what to do with the, with the cloud. So I said, let's go, go on to the trademark, Dallas trademark. We pulled up and I got out and ran up to the front to the master ceremonies. He was up on this raised table you see here. And I said, we don't know what's happened. We think something terrible has happened. And he said, well, we'll wait just a minute. We'll say a prayer in a minute. Of it. And that's the way those people learned that there had been an assassination. Then we raced on out. I, I commandeered a car and raced out to Parkland Hospital. And I started looking for Miss Conley. I went to find Miss Conley. I went in a side door. Had no lock on it. Went in the dark down the hallway. Here's where the rest of the crowd went, including the media. This was the emergency entrance. And they had already discovered where the president was going. And they were crumbling, trying to get any, any news, any news at all. Uh, and I finally went in and found Ms. Kennedy and Ms. Johnson side by side. Then at 1.11, I believe, this picture you see right here, this picture. See the picture of this gentleman right here, this reporter right in the middle. See this man right here and the look on his face. This is the moment that Malcolm Kilduff, Associate Press Secretary, announced that the president was dead. The shock you see. Hmm. The minute he finished that speech, we turned, I turned around behind him. There was a blackboard up behind him. The minute he finished, 
I got up to the blackboard. Here's the blackboard. You had you had had a chance to speak to Mrs. Ken Mrs. Uh, Connolly before this before this yes. point. Yes. When I found her, I had her tell me what had happened in the car. Yeah. What had occurred in the car. So this is what this sketch comes from. See if we can get this to uh, come on, Julian. I'm Julian Reed, R-E-A-D, aide to Governor Connolly. Could you describe the seating position in the automobile? Yes. The president was seated in the right rear seat opposite in the left rear was Mrs. Kennedy, immediately ahead of the president on a jump seat was Governor Connolly, and immediately opposite him was Mrs. Connolly. Farther up, of course, we had Secret Service, as you know. As Mrs. Connolly recalls, just before they reached the triple underpass, the shot rang out, the first shot, and she feels quite sure that it did hit the president. Governor Connolly, who was seated here, turned immediately to see what happened. And as he turned, he was struck. The president, according to Mrs. Connolly, immediately slumped, and Mrs. Kennedy grabbed him. A moment later, Governor Connolly slumped, and Mrs. Connolly grabbed him. Both women grabbed the men almost simultaneously and ducked as much as possible to guard against any possible gunfire following that. Mrs. Connolly says that the next thing she recalls is a Secret Service man picking up a telephone in the car and giving instructions of, let's proceed direct to the nearest hospital. And here's uh, here here are you uh, giving a live briefing to the to the uh, gathered press corps uh, about the of what Mrs. Connolly uh, told you about the shooting. Yes, I'll be right back. Yes, sir. Then then we see, of course, uh, the headlines uh, went out all over the world. Uh, this was, I think, one of the last times that we actually had extra papers. You saw news people go up and down roads with these papers. It was that big a news, something that we've never seen probably since then. Uh, and here is a picture, this drab, drab, sad picture of the dining hall in Austin. This was the hundred plate, hundred dollar a plate dinner. This is a hundred dollar a plate, and I want to call your attention if you will look up in the top in the corner, in the background, the round white looking red star. Yes, that is the official seal of the president. Forlorn, alone, no people, nobody else. Uh, Obviously, we had thousands of people who had come all the way to Austin for that moment. Uh, and they were in loose in town, nowhere to go. And uh, Ben Barnes, a young uh, member of the House of Representatives, had the idea that uh, we'd have a prayer vigil. And that's what they did. This is the chamber, the capital chamber, uh, state of Texas. And that's what they had. They had a prayer vigil that evening and invited people, anybody who wanted to come to be there. And they, of course, had a very forlorn uh, uh, evening. Uh, the, the untold part of the story, of course, I mentioned it uh, briefly. Uh, I'll, get, I'll come back to that. Uh, go ahead and take that, uh, boy, that's okay. Take that shot. Uh, this is Mrs. Mrs. Uh, <clears throat> That's Nellie Connolly, isn't it? John, yeah, Nellie Connolly, uh, doing one of numerous 
the interviews she did for the media. Uh, we would obviously kept the press up to date on what was going on uh, during the stay there. Uh, we had her, she spoke to the media a couple of times, uh, standing, speaking from a sitting, standing position. But this was, this was other time when she just briefed it, briefed it as. Then uh, there's another picture there, I believe. Uh, oh, this is, this is a picture. This is a unique occurrence that took place. Uh, all the media was screaming to hear from John Connolly. Obviously, he had been shot almost. I'm, I barely mentioned the governor, and that's not an oversight. It's just that there's so much to cover. Uh, any other time, it would have been an eight column headline itself. Uh, it just happened to the day that the president of the United States was killed. But here he was speaking to Mark Negronsky, who was a very prominent uh, newsman with NBC, who flew overnight from uh, uh, Washington to come down. We had been asked by all the press, they had to hear from Governor Connolly. Since he had been in the car, uh, they wanted to get an eyewitness from him. Uh, so Martin Gronsky spoke to him and this was set up because Governor Connolly was very weak. Uh, I wanted to put a limit on what the press coverage was. And so we required that we would have only one, one person to interview him. And this was a gentleman that we, we knew and trusted uh, and know that the, and the ground rules were that all the networks, there were only three networks in those days. Remember, just three major networks, uh, NBC, CBS, and uh, <coughs> ABC. And uh, this gentleman spoke for all three of them. And the, and the deal was that all three networks had to take the entire interview without any cuts in it. And that was a unique kind of occasion that you normally would not uh, try to in request at all. Anyway, that's more of the coverage that went on for weeks and weeks. Uh, later on, you'll see a picture here. Uh, I believe, oh, here we are, of course, for the funeral service in Washington. Uh, of course, that was an incredible world event. A uh, very dramatic picture of the family and uh, President Johnson uh, and others in the background that you can see there. Mm -hmm. uh, we had uh, uh, Johnny, the eldest son of the Connellys, uh, represented the Connolly family. Of course, they couldn't attend, obviously. Uh, so he was there as a guest. Uh, the Johnsons were kind enough to sort of embrace him uh, and took him, took him with them everywhere. And he was attending and representing the colonists at the, at the funeral uh, in DC. Uh, here is a picture of Dealey Plaza, back to where scene of the crime, Dealey Plaza, of course, uh, uh, has been redone 50 years later for the 50th anniversary. Uh, Dealey Plaza, where Dealey, uh, the Dealey Museum is. Uh, and that's something I represent to you. I, I, uh, Dealey Plaza is actually now the center of all of the uh, historical attractions surrounding this tragedy. Uh, I recommend it to you and they have just at the plaza have just come out with a new virtual program uh, for the, uh, this final, well, the current anniversary celebration. Uh, there's uh, lots to see up there. I think we have another picture here of an interior shot. Uh, I believe we have some of one of the, uh, uh, there's, oh, this is Governor Connolly. I got, a, I got a hit, there's the interior. There it is. Here we are. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> this is just one display up there. There have been so many, so many uh, theories, you know, so many, many 
different theories of what happened there. It, hadn't, it couldn't be just one man. You know, we just couldn't be one man caused all this. Well, now uh, the Dealey Museum over there actually has a large sign devoted to four or five of the most uh, prominent theories uh, of what else might have happened rather than just one man killing the Kennedy. Uh, so you, if you want to go and see all those, you can see those along with all the rest of the story. Uh, that final picture, near the final picture you saw, uh, was uh, Governor Connolly weeks later. Of course, he was confined to a sling. Uh, he came very near dying. Uh, Mrs. Connolly pulled him down. <clears throat> she pulled him down in a limousine just to pull him down and protect him. And in so doing, she closed a gaping hole in his chest, was blown open. Uh, by the shot. And I had never heard the, that before. The doctors say that had she not pulled him down, uh, just in an act of God love, you know, that he never would have made it off the, wow. off the, off the table. Uh, anyway, he was there for weeks. Uh, and here he was back in the mansion finally, and a visit, a happy day visit between him, Ms. Connolly, and Mrs. Uh, Johnson and President Johnson. Uh, needless to say, uh, it's not a scene that would want to repeat. Uh, Dallas had a had quite a legacy from this event. Yes, yes. I'm glad you brought that up. Uh, one of the things that came following, Dallas was labeled immediately as a city of hate. It was labeled a city of hate. And it was incredible how much that manifested itself. Uh, actually, people traveling from Dallas who were identified traveling were sometimes turned away from uh, hotels. It really happened. The head of the largest uh, foundation in Dallas was literally physically thrown out of a cab in New York when they learned he was from Dallas. It became merciful horrible Dallas city of hate. Uh, there had been uh, things happening. I've talked about them before there. And this just raw, 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 raw hatred. Uh, interestingly enough, uh, as a sidelight, uh, two things helped uh, finally people quit asking about Dallas when you went to uh, travel overseas. Instead, believe it or not, they asked about the Cowboys and ask about uh, what was the uh, what was the Dallas the story Dallas? Oh, J.R. Ewing. J.R. Ewing. Yeah. In fact, one prominent deter one prominent uh, news man came back from uh, uh, London once and told me that uh, they uh, asked uh, the news man they asked the news man to. Uh, do you know the Ewings well? <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, finally Dallas uh, got something else to talk about. Uh, but uh, I, I don't want to make light of it ever. Uh, but anyway, uh, it took years for Dealey Plaza uh, Museum to come about because Dallas really didn't want to do anything about it. They wanted to just hush it up. Uh, but when they did it, they did it well. They did it magnificently. And Nellie Conley was requested to dedicate it when it was finished uh, seven years ago. Uh, she was, she made the presentation uh, there at Dealey Plaza. Uh, one more, two more things I believe we have here. Oh, I mentioned these, uh, this is just a sample. This, this final, uh, picture is exactly where the parking lot across from from uh, across from uh, uh, Texas hotel. hotel in Fort Worth the Texas hotel spoke yeah yes it's now yeah. a uh, what did I say what I'll tell it is anyway Across the street, they have built this magnificent plaza 
uh, that you see there uh, with the huge likeness of the, of the president himself and then a number of beautiful, beautiful, beautiful uh, paintings and photography uh, saluting uh, the president and Ms. Kennedy. And this, this magnificent thing across from the Hilton, it's the Hilton Hotel, uh, is well lighted and it operates 24 hours a day uh, as a very popular uh, gathering place for people who love history. And inside the hotel, there quite is a gathering of magnificent uh, pictures and stories, articles about the Kennedy assassination. So that's, uh, that's highlights of a memory that will never go away. Uh, I don't think it's gonna be much longer that I'll be one of the few who were on the bus that day. Uh, as time goes on, obviously more of us pass, uh, but in my heart, in my mind, it will be an experience that will forever uh, burn my soul. And uh, we we really appreciate today. you. Really appreciate your sharing uh, this with us this evening, uh, Julian. And uh, uh, it's a remarkable uh, personal uh, history and description of the events leading up to and, and during and after the assassination. Uh, I would mention that uh, copies of your book are available in the Westminster Library for people that haven't uh, haven't read it uh, yet, and I recommend it to them. So, uh, is there anything else you'd like to say before we uh, tell everybody good night? No, no, Boyd. Thank you for the opportunity to uh, share it with. Uh, this is the first time for y'all for your listeners. Uh, information that we have ever utilized uh, photos in a display. Yeah. yeah. Well, thank you for uh, for sharing those with us. And um, you're welcome. I'm glad to do it. Thank you. And so, and, and so, to you and to all of our uh, uh, fellow residents out there, stay well and stay safe. Have a good evening. <laughs>